Hello there, I'm Callum Johns and welcome to Fun Facts. This song I'm going to be talking to you about lightsabers through the years. This will actually be my first more lore type video, so we'll see how this goes. It took a bit of groundwork to do, but what inspired this is I saw an image on social media that was talking about lightsabers through the years and felt that it got some things inaccurate for if they were trying to go for the original appearances of each of the types of lightsabers. So welcome to my version of lightsabers through the years. So I'm going by release dates for when these lightsaber types actually first appeared. And the traditional lightsaber is of course the first, which we all know from Star Wars, the first movie in 1977. But actually technically it first appeared in the novelization originally titled Star Wars. The Adventures of Luke Skywalker from the Journal of the Wills. The next one is the dual phase lightsaber, which can extend to about double its length with a simple extra activation switch. This, Wikipedia says, first appeared in A New Hope. And while Vader has a dual phase lightsaber, the concept was not introduced in that book and movie. Instead, the dual phase lightsaber was first introduced in the second Jedi Academy trilogy book, Dark Apprentice, which was written by Kevin J. Anderson and released in 1994. And in that, the dual phase lightsaber is wielded by Kip Duron. On to the next one, we have the Light Whip, which first appeared in the classic Marvel Star Wars issue 95, so the original Marvel Star Wars run. It is titled Nozeltrons and was released in 1985 and written by Mary Jo Duffy. And in this comic, it's, the light whip is wielded by Shira Bree, or Lumia as she's later known. And if you don't know, the light whip is basically a whip, but the lightsabers instead of actual rope. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and in response to that, in the original Marvel Star Wars issue 96, titled Duel with the Dark Lady, Luke Skywalker wields a Shoto lightsaber, which is actually a shorter lightsaber that he uses as a secondary lightsaber in order to combat Lumiar's light whip. And that was released in 1985 and also written by Mary Jo Duffy, as a lot of them were in that last part of the Marvel Star Wars run. The curved hilt lightsaber, as we all know from Count Dooku wielding it in Attack of the Clones, actually first appeared in Chattels of the Jedi number 1, Ulic Keldroma and the Beast Wars of Ondron part 1, which was released in 1993 and written by Tom Veitch. And in this particular comic, it's wielded by a character named Tot Donita. Next is the ever popular double bladed lightsaber, which first appeared in Tales of the Jedi The Sith War 3 The Trial of Ulic Keldroma, which was released in 1995, which, for the record, is four years before The Phantom Menace came out, and that was written by Kevin J. Anderson. And, of course, the double bladed lightsaber was first invented by the character of Exar Kun. Although a lot of people know it was first appearing in The Phantom Menace, it actually first appeared in this comic. So it's a really cool thing that a lot of the things that George Lucas used actually came from the EU for the prequels. The next by release date to come out are the Proto Sabres. And those are lightsabers as they were being invented to need an extra power pack attached to them and stuff before they were fully evolved into what became the traditional lightsaber. 
And those first appeared in Tales of the Jedi, Golden Age of the Sith, number zero, Conquest and Unification, which was released in 1996 by Kevin J. Anderson, and they're wielded by multiple Jedi and characters there. And a really unique one that only appears in this one is a light club. It's very close to a long-handled lightsaber, but it's huge, it's giant size. And that only appears in Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, which was released in 1997, developed by LucasArts of course, and it's wielded by Gork, because basically a normal lightsaber would be too small for him, it look really weird and pincy, because he's a Gamorrean Dark Jedi, and he basically has a giant handle, and so the blade that comes out is thicker and everything as well. It's interesting. Next to appear are the training lightsabers, which first appeared in Jedi Apprentice number one, The Rising Force, which was released in 1999, and it was written by Dave Wolverton. And it's used by generally the younglings. They show that multiple people are using the training lightsabers, although the focus of the story is Obi-Wan Kenobi, so you can say that Obi-Wan first wielded it, that we see, but of course all the other younglings and everything are wielding them as well. And then next, interestingly, is the Guard Shoto, or Tomfa, lightsaber. And that first appeared in Darth Maul number 2, which was released in 2000, and is written by Ron Mars, and it's wielded by Senior, who is actually a Black Sun member, which is cool. But later on, most people would know the Tomfa or Guard Shoto lightsaber as being wielded by Maris Brood in The Force Unleashed. Long-handled lightsabers, like I mentioned earlier, first appeared in Republic number 33, Darkness Part 2. It was released in 2001, and that was written by John Ostrand. I don't have a particular name for someone who's wielded it yet because I haven't read it myself. Now, here's a unique one. There's one lightsaber called the Soul Saber, which has its first and only appearance in the Wizards of the Coast RPG story of the same name. It's called Soul Saber. It first appeared. And it was released in 2000 and it was written by Lee Pickler. And then after Soul Saber, there's one other part of the RPG storyline, which is part two and part three from memory of the Child of Light saga, and it only appears there, nowhere else, so it has a bit of questionable canonicity, especially on how it works, but it does exist as a t different type of lightsaber, which I don't really understand how it works, because I haven't played the RPG, or been able to read the supplements myself. Now the interlocking hilt, also known as paired lightsabers, locking lightsabers, or form shifting lightsabers, were actually dual lightsabers that could be joined together at the hilt into a single weapon, either by a locking mechanism becoming a double bladed lightsaber or by a fibre cord, where they would be flailed about by a cord. Now, a great, great example of this is they first appeared in Bounty Hunter, the video game in 2002, wielded by Asajj Ventress, but they actually weren't locked together by Ventress in that game. So technically they didn't appear there, but they were actually shown locking together in Jedi, Mace Windu, which was released in 2003 and written by John Ostrander. And of course that's Asajj Ventress locking them together, which is really cool. Another quite interesting one is the Crossguard or Vented lightsabers. And they first appeared in Republic number 61, Dead Ends, which is released in 2004 and written by John Ostrander again. And this has a vent going diagonally out of the main hilt, and it is wielded by the Jedi Roblio Date. If I pronounce it right. The next type of lightsaber is a lightsaber pike. And they're really cool. And they first appeared in the Force Unleashed video game in 2008. And at the same time, the novel was released and the novel will be taken as a first appearance as I believe it was released slightly earlier, only slightly, about the same time. And the novel is written by Sean Williams, which is awesome. 
and they were wielded by the Emperor's Shadow Guards. Uh, later on, it's really cool how they appear in later material, like in Swotor, with the Eternal Empire Guards. Now, the Saber Cane, which is basically a traditional lightsaber, but with a hilt when deactivated that can connect into a bottom part to look like a cane, much like Lucius Malfoy with his wand, first appeared in the Clone Wars 2008 Season 2 Episode 9, Grievous Intrigue, which was released in 2010. This was wielded by Terra Sinube. The Sabre Cane was also retconned back to have a first appearance back in Knights of the Old Republic number 32, Vindication, Part 1, which was released in 2009 and was written by John Jackson Miller. The Dark Sabre, theoretically, first appears in The Clone Wars Season 2, Episode 12, The Mandalore Plot, and that episode was released in 2010. Although, not specifically the Darksaber as such, but a black crystal could be unlocked in The Force Unleashed, released in 2008. And The Force Unleashed was developed by LucasArts, Endspace, Chrome Studios and THQ Wireless. And in that game you can actually wield a lightsaber with a black blade. Which is interesting to note in connection to the Darksaber. There's a lightsaber baton that has its first and only appearance in the Knight Errant novel, released in 2011 and written by John Jackson Miller. And from the description of the lightsaber baton, I believe it could have evolved into the guard Shoto, the Tumfer. They'd be quite similar, I believe. Now there's a foldable lightsaber design, which I'll call it, which actually first appeared in the Clone Wars Season 4, Episode 7, Darkness on Umbara, released in 2011. And that was actually used by Pong Krell. Now, I looked at a little clip of it. It's really hard to see, but it is there. So, voila. Now, interesting is some of the later developments. Is the Force Saber, which is Rakatan technology that uses the Force channeled through a crystal to create a blade. It's a really awesome idea. I love that idea. I'm just putting it out there. It first appeared in Dawn of the Jedi Force film number one, which was released in 2012 and is written by John Ostrand. So that's really cool. I love that. Um, I love how they go into the drawbacks of it as well. And last but not least, light foils and to compare them to traditional lightsabers they're more like fencing swords compared to regular swords in medieval times and they appear for the first and only time in The Last Jedi which is released in 2013 and written by Michael Reeves and Maya Catherine Bonhoff so there you have it lightsabers through the years I hope you enjoyed hearing about and learning where some of these lightsabers actually first appeared and came from. And it's in release date order because through the years, it was real life years. So I would think that lightsaber ideas developed really well throughout the years. I really enjoy that aspect of the EU as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. What is your favourite lightsaber type? I'm still deciding myself. <laughs> Maybe later on I'll decide and it'll be good. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.